Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a very attractive Windows laptop from Dell. This is their new flagship XPS 13, a nice and compact device here that makes very efficient use of its display real estate here, as you can see. We're going to be taking a closer look at this laptop in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Dell. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on these are going to vary based on your configuration. Uh, these start at around $1,200 with an i5 processor and a non-touch display, and they work their way up from there. Uh, what I'm going to do here is kind of give you some recommendations as to what I think the best configuration options are, and I think you're probably going to land at around $1,500, give or take, at least at the time I'm recording this video. So let's dive into the hardware real quick and see what they sent us here. Uh, this one has an i7 processor, a 1065G7. Uh, that has the Iris Plus graphics, and I would strongly suggest that if you are in the market for one of these, spend a little bit more to get that i7 processor because it has better graphics than the i5 version that they're offering. Uh, so I think that's a very good investment for the future. You will get better graphical performance not only for games, but for video editing, uh, video production, video capture, photo editing, anything that's going to make use of the graphics system here will benefit from that uptick in performance. And I think that is a good investment to make. Now, the one they sent us has a 13-inch display. It's actually, I believe, 13.4 inches. And they have a few different options for it. So this one has the 1900 by 1200 resolution display. Uh, and it also has touch built in. Uh, because it has a touch panel on it, it's very shiny, as you can see. But they offer a less expensive display with the same resolution and brightness for a little bit less without touch, and it's a matte finish. So you might like that better if you don't need the touch option here. Now, if you want to go for the Gusto, you can get a 4K display on this. But personally, I think that's overkill in a small laptop like this one, uh, because 1900 by 1200 in a small form factor really does have decent pixel density to it. Uh, things look nice and sharp. In fact, I even turned up the Windows scaling here to make the icons and text bigger and it looks really nice. Now the 4K display will look a little nicer, but not that nicer, especially given that you're paying more for it, and you're also going to take a battery life hit in the process. All of the displays are nice and bright, around 500 nits for these, so I think you're not going to have any brightness issues no matter uh, what light you are in, and it's nice to see they have a wide range of choices available in display for this machine. Now this one has 16 gigabytes of RAM installed, you cannot upgrade it, so what you buy at the beginning is what you're going to have for life. Uh, my recommendation is to get 16 gigs on board. If you're buying a premium laptop, you're likely going to be doing premium tasks and you need that RAM, uh, especially as applications get more complicated over time. Uh, so definitely make that choice. Uh, the hard drive you can upgrade, it's an NVMe SSD. Uh, but that is only the only upgradable thing uh, that they have on the machine here. I believe this demo unit came with 512 gigs of storage for us to play with. Now the weight on this one is 2.8 pounds or 1.27 kilograms. If you go with the non-touch version, it's a little bit lighter, 2.65 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. Uh, the interior here will vary based on the color you choose, not only in color but in material. So the white one here has a glass fiber concoction and the black one that they sell has a carbon fiber here on the keyboard deck. Uh, but both versions have a really nice rugged metal feel to them, very nicely constructed and designed. I'm very, very pleased overall with what they put together here. Uh, the display, as I mentioned, looks very nice at this resolution. The only thing you're going to notice if you are sensitive to this sort of stuff is a little bit of backlight bleed on the corner. I'm noticing it on this one here in the lower left. Uh, we saw a similar thing with their uh, two-in-one version of this laptop, but otherwise the display looks uh, really, really nice here. I'm also very pleased with the keyboard. Nice large keys, they're well spaced, good travel to them, very easy to type on. I didn't have to get used to it. 
I was very happy with that. And in the upper right hand corner of the keyboard, you've got a power button that doubles as a fingerprint reader for Windows Hello. Also very happy with the trackpad here too. It's a very nice feeling trackpad that's very accurate and doesn't uh, often register any inadvertent touches. So overall, they've done a nice job here with the industrial design. And the speakers are located here on the bottom of the laptop uh, on the left and right. They're downward firing, but they actually sound very good for downward firing speakers, a really good range of sound. It's really all encompassing. It's got a bit of a surround effect to it, along with some really good stereo separation. So I was very pleased with the sound coming out of this thing overall. But of course, a pair of headphones or some Bluetooth headphones will always sound the best. Now, the webcam on this one is not spectacular. It's located up in the upper bezel. And as a result, it is really, really tiny. Uh, the quality isn't great. It's only 720p but it does provide a better angle versus prior generations of the XPS laptop that used to locate that webcam in the lower bezel. So there's an improvement in angle, not necessarily an improvement in quality. But I did like the fact that this one's got two Thunderbolt 3 ports on it, one on the left here and one on the right. Uh, these are four lane Thunderbolt 3 ports. Uh, you will power the laptop with those ports, but of course those ports do more than just power. So you can get display out, you can get data devices going back and forth. And because Thunderbolt 3 is much faster than USB, uh, you could actually plug in a desktop GPU in an enclosure right into the laptop here and get desktop quality graphics when you're docked at home. And that can provide a lot of usefulness while you still have a very portable computer that you can take with you. Uh, these ports, though, are compatible with USB-C and regular USB devices. You can also just plug in little display dongles if you need to connect to a projector or something like that. So a lot of flexibility out of these ports and a lot of performance out of them as well. Uh, you've got a card reader here, a micro SD card reader below that Thunderbolt port. On the other side, we have the second port along with a headphone microphone jack as well. So overall, a nice slick design here. I love the fact that it's got that Thunderbolt on board. Now let's take a look and see how the laptop performs. All right, we're gonna kick things off with web browsing. We loaded up the nasa.gov homepage and as expected, everything came up really fast and snappy, no issues there. Uh, the laptop does have Wi-Fi 6 on board, so if you have a fancy new router with one of those new Wi-Fi 6 radios, you'll be good to go there. Uh, we also pulled up YouTube and watched a few videos on there, namely a 1080p video running at 60 frames per second. We had no drop frames or any glitches with that, so I think Netflix watching and all the other stuff that you might do for content consumption will work very well on the machine here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 197.2 on version 1.0 of that test and 114.4 on version 2.0. That is roughly within the margin of error of other machines powered with this similar Intel chip inside. Uh, so altogether, we got the performance we expected out of it. Battery life, you're looking at about eight to nine hours if you keep the display brightness down and just stick to the basics like web browsing, office tasks, and email. If you start playing games on it, you start editing videos, you turn the display brightness up, uh, you'll see less battery life. Uh, with those things going on there. But for the basics, you should be able to get through a good chunk, if not all of the workday, without having to charge the laptop up again. Let's take a look now at some more strenuous tasks, namely gaming, and we'll start off with Rocket League. So Rocket League ran between 65 and 80 frames per second, depending on what was going on on screen at 1920 by 1200, running at the lowest settings, not bad there. Uh, we also booted up GTA 5 at 720p, low settings, we got between 35 and 50 frames per second. Uh, the Witcher 3, 720p, low settings, between 30 and 45 frames per second. Fortnite, what everyone plays these days, right? Uh, 1920 by 1200, medium settings, we were getting 20 to 40 frames per second. When we switched them down to low, we got a more playable 45 to 80 frames per second. Then we also ran the 2016 version of Doom. There at 1080p low settings, we got between 20 and 30 frames per second. When we dialed things down to 720p, we got between 28 and 41 frames per second. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 14,436. Uh, that puts this one very close to where the two-in-one version of the XPS 13 performed with the same processor. We looked at that a few months ago. But I want to direct your attention to the Acer Swift 3 there at the bottom. 
that also has this generation of Intel hardware inside, the i5 version with the G1 graphics. And you can see a pretty big difference on those first two graphics scores between these two chips. And that's about where you will see the G1 version of this laptop perform. And that's why I recommend going with the i7 version because it is a pretty significant uptick in graphics performance. And I've been very pleased with what Intel is doing with this current generation of their uh, onboard graphics hardware because we're starting to see things that perform not quite as good as a discrete GPU, but good enough to start playing some games that you could never hope to run on one of these laptops in the past. And those graphical games will also translate into video editing and photo editing and other things that make use of a GPU. So nice performance bump here, but again, I really recommend going with the i7 with the G7 graphics to get the performance we're seeing here. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 96.4%. Uh, that is just below a passing score, which means that you might see some throttling here. Not a lot, but perhaps if you're really pushing it in a game, you might notice the uh, frame rates kind of getting a little less predictable based on the temperature of the processor. So my advice would be to keep uh, all of these vents as clear as you can to prevent things from getting too hot where it would feel the need to throttle down. Uh, fan noise isn't offensive on this one. It does have a bit of a whine to it given how small everything is. Uh, I have not heard the fan kick on all that frequently when I am doing the basics again like web browsing and uh, word processing, but you will hear it kick on of course when you've got games going and other things that really push the processor a bit harder. So it will get some fan noise, but they're doing a pretty good job here of keeping that fan off unless it's absolutely necessary. Now it's also working with Linux. We booted up Ubuntu and everything was detected properly, including the video, the touch panel here, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and the audio. All seems to be working pretty well here, so no uh, issues that I could find, at least on an initial boot, and everything seems to be running as nicely on the Linux side as it is on the Windows side. Not sure about the fingerprint reader, though. That'd be one thing you might have to do a little bit more uh, digging onto for drivers and whatnot, but overall, the Linux experience, at least on an initial uh, look here, feels pretty good. And overall, I have to say, this is a nice laptop. It's nice and light, nice big screen, good performance, decent battery life, uh, very nice industrial design on it as well. Uh, no complaints on this one beyond just a little bit of uh, backlight bleed there in the corner. Otherwise, I think it's a very nicely constructed device. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.